end of World War II left the Allies with a treasure trove of German submarine research. Late war German boats, like the Type 21 and Type 23, were faster, deeper diving, and more heavily armed than their opponents. The post-war generation of Soviet submarines, like the Whiskey and Romeo classes, drew heavily on German designs. The Americans also built a few new boats incorporating German features, notably the Tang class. By 1950, the U.S. Navy was looking to the future, and plans were afoot to develop nuclear power plants for a new generation of much larger boats. On the morning of January 17, 1955, Commander Eugene P. Wilkinson Commanding officer of the USS Nautilus ordered all lines cast off and for the first time in history made the signal underway on nuclear power. The world's first nuclear-powered vessel, the Nautilus, shattered all previous submerged speed and endurance records. In August 1958, it was the first boat to reach the North Pole under the Arctic ice. Nautilus was followed by the USS Seawolf, the five boats of the Skate class, and the large radar picket submarine Triton. USS Skate was the first submarine to surface at the North Pole, while USS Sea Dragon was the first submarine to make the Northwest Passage from the Atlantic to the Pacific. The most impressive of these early nuclear feats was that of the USS Triton. On February 24, 1960, on her shakedown cruise, the Triton submerged in the Atlantic off Brazil. She surfaced on the same spot 60 days later after making the first non-stop underwater circumnavigation of the world. Nuclear power was only part of the equation. The experimental submarine Albacore was completed with a teardrop-shaped hull for maximum hydrodynamic efficiency and proved to be considerably faster than more conventional boats. The first Soviet nuclear submarine design was initiated in 1952, and the first Project 627 boats, known to NATO as the November class, entered service in 1959. The Novembers were fast, but very noisy. They were also very dangerous. Four of the 14 Novembers were lost from reactor accidents. With the Genesis reaching back to German plans of World War II, the concept of the missile-armed submarine is hardly new. Both the American and Soviet navies made use of captured German technology in the immediate post-war years. The first deployed weapons were cruise missiles, like the American Regulus, a large pilotless aircraft carried in hangars on the submarine's deck. Never more than an interim strategic platform, the missiles were launched from the surface, making the launch boat vulnerable to attack. It was from the need to reduce this vulnerability that the underwater launched ballistic missile was developed. First proposed during the 1950s, the Polaris missile was the culmination of one of the most astonishing military, technological, and industrial achievements in history. Polaris was a submarine-launched ballistic missile incorporating a number of brand new concepts never before achieved. These included solid propulsion, lightweight re-entry vehicles, lightweight nuclear and thermonuclear warheads, cold gas-submerged launch, advanced inertial navigation, both for missile and launch platform, and the notable quietening of the submarines themselves. The program got underway in 1956 
when the U.S. Department of Defense began stating its requirements and Lockheed began developing a missile to match. The launch of the first Soviet ICBM accelerated developments. The initial unsuccessful Polaris missile launch took place in 1958, and the first launch of the missile in operational form took place in 1959. In the meantime, the U.S. Navy was converting five of its nuclear-powered attack submarines on the stocks by the addition of 16 missile tubes. The first fleet ballistic missile submarine was launched in June 1959. The USS George Washington made the first underwater launch of Polaris in July 1960. In November of that year, the submarine and its missiles were declared operational. In the next five years, the US Navy commissioned 40 more boats establishing a strategic advantage over the Soviets that lasted two decades. The United Kingdom declared its intention to build four ballistic missile submarines. They were to be armed with the latest Polaris missile, the A-3, and were to shoulder the burden of Britain's nuclear deterrent from the Royal Air Force. The Resolution class became operational in the late 1960s. France have also developed and deployed SSBNs. The Soviets began their development of ballistic missile submarines at about the same time as the Americans. But in the early days, they lacked the technology to match the U.S. Navy. The first Soviet missile boats carried two or three missiles in an extended fin. The missiles were much cruder than American models their short range forcing the Soviet missile boats to operate far out into the Atlantic, where they were vulnerable to NATO hunter killers. It was not until 1967 and the introduction of the Yankee-class submarines, based apparently on stolen American technology, that the USSR had a system on par with early Polaris designs. In U.S. service, Polaris was replaced by the similar sized but heavier Poseidon missile. The Benjamin Franklin and the Lafayette class submarines were converted to fire the new missile, which was equipped with a multiple warhead. The Soviet Yankees were followed by the much larger Delta-class boats, with which their longer-range missiles could operate from bastions in the Arctic Ocean. These were dwarfed by the gigantic Typhoon-class boats that entered service in the 1980s. Larger than many battleships of the 1930s, the Typhoons were almost too big. Difficult to handle, and very expensive, they have been replaced by new, enlarged developments of the well-proven Delta design. But even as the massive new Soviet boats were entering service, they were being outmatched by the American Ohio class with their Trident missiles, the most advanced missile submarines ever built. The Trident program began in the early 1970s. The purpose of the program was to increase the range of American sub-launched missiles. Trident 
One was tested in 1977 and became operational two years later aboard converted SSBNs of the Benjamin Franklin and Lafayette classes. In the mid-1970s, a program to improve Trident's accuracy saw the development of the D-5 Trident II missile, which is considerably larger than the preceding Trident I. It has a greater range and much improved accuracy. For the first time, the U.S. Navy had the capability to strike at hardened targets such as enemy missile silos and command bunkers, previously only possible with land-based missiles. The D-5 can only be fired from Ohio-class missile boats and the Royal Navy's Vanguard-class SSBNs. The original intention was to build at least 20 of these huge submarines, ordering over 800 missiles to support them. By the end of the Cold War, there were 18 boats in service or under construction, though force levels have since been reduced to 14. Even with reduced numbers, Trident remains an awesome system. 12 boats can carry 288 missiles, which in turn can carry nearly 4,000 warheads. Each warhead alone is 15 times more powerful than the bomb which destroyed Hiroshima in 1945. A single Ohio-class ballistic missile submarine has more explosive power than all the bombs dropped in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam combined. A single Trident II warhead is equivalent to four times the entire weight of explosive dropped on Kuwait and Iraq during the Gulf War. The development of the modern nuclear attack submarine started around the same time in both the United States and the Soviet Union, followed by similar designs in the United Kingdom and France. The U.S. Navy concentrated on hunter-killer subs armed with torpedo tube-launched weapons. The five boats of the Skipjack class were followed by the larger Thresher class, later renamed the Permit class after the lead boat was tragically lost in the Atlantic while on a test dive in April 1963. These boats had an improved teardrop shape and established the basic design for all later submarines. These were followed by the 37-ship Sturgeon class, a very successful design that provided the mainstay of U.S. submarine forces through the 1980s and 1990s. The current generation of U.S. Navy hunter-killers are provided by the Los Angeles class. The name ship entered service in 1976, the first of 62 boats. Originally designed to hunt submarines, American boats have become multi-mission platforms. Now, their primary roles are hunting enemy submarines and surface ships, launching cruise missile strikes on land-based targets, and gathering intelligence. The final 23 submarines of the 62-ship class are known as Flight 3, or Improved 688s. These are equipped with advanced integrated combat systems, as well as retractable bow planes and hardened sails to break through the ice during Arctic operations. Other nations operating nuclear attack boats include the French and the British, whose highly respected submarine fleet has been operating a series of advanced nuclear submarines since the early 1960s.
However, for much of the Cold War, the primary threat to the U.S. Navy came from the massive Soviet submarine fleet. Following the pioneering but noisy November class, the Soviets developed a series of attack boats paralleling American designs. The Victor class was the first to approach American levels of sophistication, and the experimental titanium-hulled Alpha class was the fastest submarine in the world. The latest Sierra and Akula class boats are extremely capable machines. The Soviets also developed submarines specifically to carry large anti-ship cruise missiles. The original Juliet and Echo class boats probably had a strategic role, but the more modern Charlie class and the massive Oscar class boats were designed to take out American carrier battle groups. At the end of the Cold War, Western hunter killers like the U.S. Navy's Los Angeles and the British Trafalgar had to penetrate deep into heavily defended Soviet waters or follow their targets into their normal operating areas in polar waters. At the same time, other NATO submarines were engaged in duels of nerves with their opposite numbers in Soviet hunter killer and cruise missile boats. Both sides had some advantages in the struggle. Soviet boats were generally faster and dived deeper than British and American submarines. But where the Western boats scored was in stealth. At normal operational speeds, a boat like the USS Los Angeles is very nearly silent. That silence is vital. The submarine world is a predatory place where victory goes to the least conspicuous. Dive! 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 A modern submarine is packed with highly sensitive sonar with some of the most sophisticated electronics in existence making sense of the sound data. The skipper of a Los Angeles knows more about the mysterious underwater world about him than any submarine commander in history. Knowing about something and having the capability to deal with it are two different things. Big though they are, Modern attack submarines carry only 20 or so tube-launched weapons. These are usually a mix of wire-guided torpedoes, anti-ship missiles, anti-submarine missiles, and mines. The latest American boats have been fitted with vertical launch tubes to fire Tomahawk cruise missiles. And since the first Gulf War, they have been used to attack land targets. War has reduced the need for massively expensive and highly sophisticated attack submarines and missile boats. Only three of the latest Seawolf class of submarines have been built for the U.S. Navy. Originally designed to counter the rapidly increasing capabilities of the Soviet submarine force projected into the 21st century, the Sea Wolf will be able to perform a variety of tasks anywhere from the Arctic ice to the coastal waters of the world. Missions include surveillance, intelligence collection, special warfare, covert cruise missile strike, mine warfare, and anti-submarine and anti-surface ship warfare. Above all, the Sea Wolf is quiet. In fact, it's reputed to make less noise at tactical speeds than submarines of the previous generation make when tied alongside a pier. The Tactical Trident Initiative will convert three boats in total for tactical missions. 
The USS Ohio has already been converted, and the USS Florida, USS Michigan, and USS Georgia will follow. They will be converted to carry unmanned underwater vehicles, unmanned aerial vehicles, swimmer delivery systems, and cruise missiles. Submarines have changed dramatically over the last century. They have grown 50-fold and can travel 10 times faster over an infinitely greater distance. Weapons capability has grown even more quickly. While conditions for modern crewmen would seem unbelievably comfortable to their grandfathers. Yet, in their most important characteristics, submarines remain the same. They are denizens of a silent, deadly world where guile and deception are added to power and weaponry to create the most effective naval weapon in history.